I've been working on lots of things with this old craftsman lathe and I'm kind of in mid project here with this build but I wanted to show what I was working on and some of the upgrades and changes that we're going to try for today and see how it works out. And this is a 50 or 60 year old craftsman lathe and we've made some adjustments here some different builds I'll explain this in another video this is for a milling attachment and these were aluminum sheets that we brazed or sort of pseudo welded together so there's a whole mount for that we've got a quick change post here that we made a different plate for for the bottom but for the project today this is for a power feed with more control than we have with just the initial designed power feed setup. We throw that switch and our $25 stepper motor here with a scrap stepper motor from the junk bin is engaged for the power feed here. This, this switch is just for the lathe, just the motor itself. And this unit operates independently. As far as the mount goes here, this was a 3D printed part that I quickly drew up. And this just drops inside there. This is running off of a old power supply. An old power supply I pulled out of my, my pile of old power supplies. And with these two buttons here, we can go forward and reverse for the lathe. Lock that down. And then there we go in that direction. We can change our speed on here. Pretty fast. Stop. Go the other direction. And this can be worked the same way as usual. We can pop this up, disengage, or re-engage. And another thing you can do with this is you can throw it back kind of on the fly. So if we change direction, we just do it immediately. There's no stopping, disengaging, re-engaging here. Or just stop. The little side project I'm working on for this today though is because of the way this is set up I used one of the old change gears for this lathe that came with a bunch of gears to set it up for threading but that's kind of a hassle in here so I used one of those directly connected to the stepper here and then that gear directly connects to our lead screw here. The thing I'm working on today is there's rattling in here just the nature of these old gears. And we're going to set this up for belts and see if we can quiet this down. We've got several gears here. This is actually the gear that connects to the lead screw that directly connects to all of the gears so that the lathe can itself run the lead screw. So this is kind of the stock setup, not that belt that came from something else, but this is the gear that goes on so that the motor that's for the lathe can run the lead screw. These are two that we're testing. This was an $11 gear set that I bought online. This will go on the actual stepper motor. We've got our belt and then we've got these gears here. And I did two of these just to see if they would work. These are simply epoxied together and we'll see which one works. So this goes on to the lead screw. The belt will go on here and then our stepper will connect through there and we'll build some sort of mount and see if this will really quiet things down. I think it will. And one of the cool things about a metal lathe is you can make your own holders and parts for the things you're working on, kind of make your own tools. What I wanted to make sure was that I had this gear here perfectly centered to the gear there for the pulley. And in order to do that, I just turned down 
some aluminum here, put that in there, and then while I was epoxying this up, it kept everything nice and trued up. And this fits in this one, and it fits in this one as well. And again, that kept everything really, really tight. It's worth noting this is not an ELS system. This is not an electronic lead screw system because there's no data coming from the spindle to the stepper that controls the lead screw. They're not locked together. We would need a lot of data going back and forth, a lot of corrective data going back and forth to adjust the different speeds, especially under load. And right now this is just for control of the lead screw. This shows the setup that we were using here, which we're going to try to improve upon. So this was one of the gears that came with this old lathe. So again, as far as setting up all these different gears, these different ratios for a particular thread count, that would be one of the ones that would be in the chain. But for this part here, and it does work, it's just clunky and kind of loud, which is what we're going to try to improve on today. But the way this was built is we drilled some holes here, countersunk these bolts, and then attached it to this piece here. This was the head of a great big bolt that was kind of in the junk bin. And then we put this on the lathe and flattened this side, flattened the other side, and then bolted it together. And as far as the screw here, I ran some taps so the screw would hold on to the shaft of the little stepper motor. And just another view of this ugly duckling part that does work. Which actually took a fair amount of time to put together. And with our centering tool here, I hadn't made this one up yet, but it's kind of nice to see that fit in there. Because quite honestly, this piece here, I pretty much eyeballed it as far as the alignment goes. There's the first epoxied up gear that we will test. You can see the lead screw turns freely and we're attached here. Nice thing about these old Craftsman things are that they're really standard screw sizes. So this was just a quarter 20 bolt that we cut down. And there's a little keyway, little key in there, which is going to keep this on there nice and tight. So the screw just keeps this from coming out. There's our completed setup here. It looks pretty clean. We've got our stepper motor bolted down, our belt control on here to our lead screw. This is off right now. So come over here, turn that on. Our screen comes alive and we've got a controllable variable speed lead screw for this 60 year old lathe for about $25 for this part here and some scrap stepper stuff. I think this was about $12 for two of these and two of the smaller gears there. So we're good to go there. We can go to the right. We can speed up. Slow down. Disengage just like old school regular stuff. Engage our half nut. We can also flop this on the fly. So we're going to the right. We don't need to stop this in between. We can just hit that button and then we shift in another direction here. Nice and clean setup. I also cut the shape of the cover here so that our plastic cover can go on and we've just got a cut out for this end down here. But lots of cool possibilities with this and nice and quiet. A lot quieter than that gear setup that we had to start with. Very, very cool. As noted earlier, we can set the distance here. So I was just playing around with a few settings and I set it for five revolutions. Depending on which one you go first with, whether you're going to the right or to the left, it'll go to that distance and then it'll automatically flip and then come back the other way, which can be really useful for 
moving in on parts and then the only thing you would do is adjust your depth here unless you want to put another stepper on this which we're not doing right now but as far as this goes we've got our lead screw our uh, half nut locked we can go here and then it automatically comes back Another setting which is kind of cool is the length of time that you hold down the left or the right button is how long it will be engaged. So while we hold this down, we're moving, and as soon as we let up, we stop. Then we go to the left, and stop. So you don't even need to play with this control right here as well. Very, very cool stuff.